So, the L is a finite dimensional semi simple algebra and H is a fixed path sub algebra and phi is a root system associated and now I am fixing a base. Okay. So, these things are uh, 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 these things are fixed and also fix a Shivalya base is Shivalya base. So, uh, this basis is H i. So, H i you know uh, this is H of alpha i. Okay. So, 1 less than equal to i is an L rank and x alpha alpha and phi. So, fix a uh, uh, basis. So, all the property which uh, I listed yesterday uh, they are there. So, uh, yesterday we have <coughs> uh, proved that if I take the uh, span of Shivalya uh, basis, then this is a Lie algebra defined over z. Okay. So, this is a uh, sum uh, z h i and z uh, x alpha. So, alpha and phi uh, this is a Lie algebra is a Lie algebra over integers. Okay. So, therefore, uh, I can reduce it modulo uh, p to get a Lie algebra over a prime and then I get a tensor with any field to get a Lie algebra over this. Okay. So, Shivali group uh, which Shivali defined they are the automorphism of uh, uh, Lie algebra. Okay. Uh, this Lie algebra, but now I'm uh, since uh, it will be double definition, so uh, now I'll uh, do another con construction of which this will be going to be a special case, and it is going to cover all kind of Shivali group. Okay, so this construction is going to be generalized uh, today, and uh, the Shivali group uh, we are going to get in this case, and our other Shivali groups are going to be. Uh, central extensions of this okay and uh, we'll see that so it will depend only on certain things and not on the representation etc so okay so let us begin so now uh, first you fix so what is the idea idea is that so you consider so u is this is the inversal enveloping algebra Okay, inversal European algebra, algebra of uh, L, right. Now, fix an ordering of uh, positive root, fix uh, an ordering say alpha 1, uh, alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha n of uh, phi plus. So, this n is a uh, uh, number of positive roots, you fix an ordering of this and consider the, these kind of uh, elements. So, a a 1 a 2 a n and okay, and uh, b is some b 1 b 2 b l. And C is C1, uh, C2. So, this, this is in Z capital N, uh, this is in ZL, and uh, this is also in uh, ZL. Okay. So, now then consider the element of the uh, kind FA. So, fixed notation FA is your add x alpha uh, power x uh, power a i. So, these are the, uh, so the, uh, should I, so these are all greater than or equal to 0, all a i's are, okay. So, a i's b i and 
Ci, they are all greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So, they are all non negative integers and x, x alpha, x alpha say i and a i by factorial a i and okay. So, you consider the product of such element. So, this is a product of such element and similarly you find f beta. So, f beta is uh, the product of element of the kind h i b i and f c is uh, product of the element of the kind. So, this is a alpha, here alpha is positive. So, alpha belongs to so, the, uh, so these are the positive roots. Okay, so you have already uh, fixed. So the okay, and at x minus alpha i or c i divided by uh, c i factorial. So if these are the usual uh, definition. Uh, as you define the binomial coefficient, so it has usual definition. So, if I replace h i by integer, you get the integer. Now, theorem is says that uh, which is due to a constant. h i is the you define like the usual uh, thing that h i h i minus 1 h i minus 2 h i minus b i plus 1 divided by factorial b i. Okay. So, so h, h i is the fundamental core roots. Hmm? Oh, yeah. So, these are the elements. Okay. So, uh, see the, this f a if all these are elements in you see this uh, f a f b and uh, so, I think they have different name f a and this is uh, h little better notice is h h b and this is I am sorry. So, maybe better notice. So, this is a e c okay, f for the positive things h for the uh, h thing and uh, e for negative negative thing. So, look at change the notation. So, f for uh, this thing. So, then F A uh, all these elements F A, H B and uh, E C they are members of uh, U L right, they are all members. Alright, uh, oh so I am sorry, I am sorry without add yes, they no add I am sorry. So, this is without add. So, x uh, these are the. So, the sorry, F, yes, but you are switching that. So, Oh, then that's okay. That's okay. I'm just following one notation. Oh, oh, yeah. Then, but f is negative. And, is yeah, yeah. That's that's true. So, yeah, as he says that uh, you see in the SL2 case, f, f for the negative thing and uh, e for positive, yeah. and this for s. So it's okay. It's okay. So the question theorem says that. Uh, so, this is the okay. The, you consider the subring which is generated by so U L Z. Uh, you consider this is the subring. So, let be the subring of U L generated by all uh, element of the kind f a h b. So, this is a product and e c. Then, uh, this is a lattice. So, z form means a lattice. 
this is a lattice. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, in the order. So the, the element has been written in order because uh, you see, uh, there is a Poincare Birkhoff bit theorem. We say that you take an arbitrary, fixed arbitrary order and such kind of thing is going to be a basis. Okay. So this is used, of course, this, this is used. So this is in US. Okay. So the, uh, uh, this is a, okay. So this is a light constant constructed uh, uh, this uh, lattice which is inside uh, this algebra, and uh, this lattice is used to define uh, Chevalier groups, various type of uh, uh, Chevalier groups, and you see that it has a very good role. So let us also fix uh, uh, some other things. So for example, I call. So this is a subalgebra, say let us write n, n plus is the subalgebra generated by all positive, n plus n, this is the subalgebra of L, huh. sure. Yes. But the point is, but what you are trying to make is that it's a ring. It's a ring. It's a, it's a ring, yeah, which contains right. one, ah. which also contains one. So this is a sub ring. Uh, that is a, it's, a, it's a form in the sense of a ring, ring form. So one, uh, yeah, it's, uh, this one belongs to this. Uh, sorry? Is it okay? What is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you take in place the subalgebra of L generated by uh, this L alpha, alpha positive, and similarly n minus uh, is the subalgebra generated by L minus alpha, alpha positive roots. Okay. So, and you write uh, these notations. Uh, so, u n u plus minus n a. Okay. So, this is inverse algebra for n plus and u n minus. Okay. And u h. So, this is u for the inverse. Algebra, okay. So, we consider for this positive roots uh, uh, subalgebra get by positive root uh, this uh, root spaces, negative root spaces and this for H which is 0 thing. Okay. So, then uh, again the by Poincare Vakar bit theorem this thing that u is going to be, so first of all u z is, okay. so u l z is nothing but u n okay so this is a z and sometimes this is also called zero so the uh, this is this is going to be uh, this ring is, this ring is okay. This okay. Okay, lattice is subgroup generated by a basis. Subgroup of a vector space generated by a basis. Okay. So, if we take the subgroup generated by this, by Poincare theorem, it becomes lattice, obviously. No. No. That is. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Yeah. 
this is okay. So, now we will uh, define jet form what is lattice inside uh, L module. So, you uh, recall that uh, okay. So, suppose V is let V is L module and L module then uh, you know that then V is also V has uh, you model is structured right because uh, by inversal property of the inversal algebra uh, any L module is model for U L right. So, this is by uh, universal property of of U L. Because uh, at V is model means uh, you have a Lie algebra homomorphism from here to G L V, but once you have a homomorphism from here to here and uh, this has already homomorphism from here to here. So, then there is a unique homomorphism from here to here. Okay. So, this gives a model structure here. So, any L model has a UL model structure. Okay. So, this is the part here. Here. So, yeah, UN, uh, UN uh, plus Z means the FS. Okay, so F is F is S. And this is the uh, EC is N. Okay, so, the, uh, the you have this model structure. Now, recall that uh, there is a notion of weight. So, this is a any L, any L model is direct sum of irreducible model, right? Some of the complete irreducibility is going to hold, and we know already the notion of what is the weight and this that. So, this V is a direct sum of, so uh, V is direct sum of weight spaces. V mu and mu is a weight. So, we, uh, if I take uh, any V in V mu, then H and H in H, then H and V x by mu, okay. Mu H V. So, pi V notation pi V is the set of all weights. So, these are called weights. The, these things have been already done, right. So, these are weights. So, V is direct sum of weight spaces, uh, subspaces and pi V is the set of all set of all weights of V, right. So, now uh, we have following thing that you know that if you take a reducible model then it has a unique uh, highest weight. Uh, the highest weight and all other weights are strictly smaller in the ordering of the weights, right? The other in the system. So, now theorem says the following, which, which is just a recall for you. So, that any root, uh, if I take a reducible model and dominant weight, then there is a unique, uh, if I take a dominant weight, there is a unique reducible model of uh, that that highest weight right and uh, unique means up, uh, up to isomorphism and the highest highest means any any weight which is occurring is strictly so smaller than the highest weight and this that and uh, x alpha of course uh, going to kill all uh, element in the highest weight uh, subspace So, the definition is that if I take Z model which is generated by all weights. So, this is a, a Z model which is a notation. So, this is inversion if the Z model generated by uh, generated by all weights. of L okay. and uh, this R lambda R is the Z 
that module generated by by phi. So this is a root. Uh, this uh, this a lattice. This is also lattice, and uh, this sits here. And this has a basis of uh, uh, this inversal has a basis of uh, fundamentally dominant weights or basis uh, basis there. And what relation we have that this is jet form, a fundamentally dominant weight is going to this, this is going to be sit there. And if I take any model, then uh, the so this contains uh, root lattice, this is called root lattice R. And if I take uh, let V be any, any L model and lambda V, you know, suppose lambda V is the, the subgroup, subgroup generated by by P V, P V means uh, all weights. So, then uh, this is uh, contained there and this contains there that is the root lattice is contained in every. So, this is called the weight lattice for V. So, this uh, this has a name this is a weight lattice for V. Okay. So, weight lattice is contained there and the index of this is precisely the determinant of the quantum matrix. So, this is a finite index. Uh, so, if I write down see the see this is a lattice, this is also lattice and they have same rank because the fundamental dominant weight are going to be a basis there and uh, fundamental roots. Okay. So, they are basis there. So, if I want to express a basis element here in terms of basis here, then the coefficients used are precisely Karta integers. Okay. So, so, therefore, index is index of this inside this is determinant of the Karta matrix. So, maybe you can take it and as an exercise or you might have already done. So, the index is So, this is the determinant of uh, Kartha matrix. So, the determinant of Kartha matrix. Maybe I, I will not introduce any notation here. Okay. Huh. Oh, maybe the PV standard one. So, all these statements I, I think you might have uh, seen or if, if not then easy to see and uh, okay. So, if there is any problem we will discuss in tutorial thing. So, these statements are there. Now, so there is a notion of what is called admissible lattice, admissible jet form. If a lattice in uh, V is invariant under UZ, this is called admissible lattice. So, so V is again uh, this is a model, uh, this is an L model, a lattice M in V invariant under under use it. So, this is called will be called an admissible, admissible lattice spelling please check the spelling lattice. Jet form. Okay. So now, uh, so you 
what is our aim? What is our aim? That you want to uh, you start with any representation and want to search a lattice which is an invariant under this UZ. Okay. So we'll take such lattice and uh, then out of that we'll construct a group which will be called Chevalier group of uh, this kind of uh, root system. So for example, if I take a Uh, if I take the standard uh, this uh, advanced representation, so if I take V to be L and uh, so V so V is a and L so V is okay V uh, model with with respect to adjoint representation add. So, our joint representation gives model structure here. So, then Lz which I have constructed is an admissible lattice, right. Because you have seen that, uh, so add, so, so this is invariant tender. So, how this model is acting? X alpha is acting by add X, X alpha, right. So, add X alpha power M by factorial M takes LZ inside LZ, right. And also the HIBI kind of element, they also takes uh, LZ inside LZ. So, therefore, it is going to be invariant under this. Is it okay? So, what you have proved yesterday? So, invariant means what? You have action of uh, Lie algebra by adjoint and so invariant. So, you have Lie algebra is acting by, uh, by adjoint representation. So, you have uh, action of this algebra, uh, this algebra here and you have seen yesterday that uh, this gives uh, this uh, this lattice invariant. So, therefore, it will be uh, invariant under the product F A is similarly E C and H C right H B whatever. So, this is this is a lattice. So, is, for the adjoint representation we have a lattice and now uh, you want to show that every representation has a lattice. Okay. So, it, then you take a representation and take a lattice there and out of that we will construct a group which will be called Chevalier group. And you see that the, the Chevalier group which will come from this lattice is uh, in some sense the smallest and all other Chevalier groups are there covering, central, cover, central covering of uh, this Chevalier group. So, the idea is the following. So, if uh, for example, if you take a, if you see, uh, if you change the admissible lattices, so the, okay, the moment when you de define Chevalier group, it is not clear, it is not apparent that whether the groups are different or same, but ultimately we come to presentation of Chevalier groups. Okay, we say that it doesn't depend on the lattice; uh, it only depends on the root lattice. Okay, so see all these X alpha etc. They have uh, presentation in generator and relation, and those one uh, those relation are uh, presentation only depend on the root lattice, not on the given lattice M, whatever. Hmm. For this, yes, for 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 okay, because two representation might give the same uh, same uh, this uh, root lattice, right? Different different representations, many many representation. For example, this uh, yes. many representation may may give the same, but you uh, will not will get only finitely many Shivali groups, not in, in infinity many Shivali groups. So may, many Shivali groups are going to be coincide. But at the moment, it's not clear that whether they are going to coincide or not. So, but you see that this uh, generator of the Chevalier groups, uh, 
they have very Sternberg presentation, they have very nice presentation and those presentation depends only on the lattice of the, uh, this uh, root la root la lattice of the representation. So, that does not depend on the lattice issues in, in between. Okay. So, whether you take uh, LZ or, or you take any other lattice does not matter, but but it's not clear uh, at this time. Okay. It will be clear later on only. Sorry? No, it's not unique. It's not unique. That's what you are discussing. Right? It's not, see, the lattice, lattices are not unique and. Uh, no, no. See, uh, admissible lattice means it, it had to be invariant under all these uh, UZ. UZ means X alpha power M divided by factorial M and HIBI, this kind of element. Huh? It should be invariant under, under those things. So, they, there could be many, and in fact, they are, they are, they are, they are many. But, in fact, for example, you can take a lattice and take half the lattice. Yeah. So, th there are many lat lattices, but, okay. So, from each lattice uh, and fixing a field, we will define a group. So, at the time of definition, it seems that there might be several groups like this. But it turns out that uh, there are only, only finitely many groups and they are precisely the covering of uh, certain groups, certain fixed group of this kind. So, the, okay. And in fact, uh, okay, so the, this is going to be, uh, the gap is only the determinant. The number of, at most uh, Shivala groups could be the, just uh, the determinant of the Karta matrix, not more than that. Okay, so it's not clear at the moment. You can take another example. So, uh, for example, you can take L to be SL2, and you take a V to be standard representation. So, this is a C2, the standard representation, standard model, and you let lattice is the simple one. Lattice uh, Z10. At 0, 1. So, this is also a lattice, right? Eh? It is going to be invariant under the action. What are, what are the actions? This uh, x, y, t, x, y, h. So, this is also lattice. M is an additional lattice. So, more generally, if I take, uh, say, SLN and uh, take the standard uh, representation and the, uh, the subgroup generated by the basis vector, this is going to be lattice there, the standard one. This is one thing. So, now, uh, the question that, uh, the question is that whether the admissible lattice exists or not. Now, you are going to prove that uh, every representation has admissible lattice. Okay. So, this theorem uh, says the following. So, let uh, V be any, see since every representation is uh, direct sum of irreducible representation, so it is enough to take the irreducible representation. Okay. So, let B uh, be an irreducible uh, L model. Okay. Then, first, uh, V has a V has an admissible lattice. And further, so if uh, M is a lattice. So, in fact, this statement is uh, true in weaker sense, is a lattice, a lattice in V and, okay. So, 
admissible lattice in V. lattice in V and if uh, V is this is direct sum of eight spaces V mu okay, then M is uh, this sum of direct sum of uh, M intersection. So, this uh, is P V see this, uh, see this is a uh, see you have a direct decomposition of a vector space uh, and uh, you have a, a lattice there then in general you did not expect such kind of decomposition that every component is uh, okay it is direct sum of component, but here it is true. If it is admissible lattice, then it is a direct sum of the component inside M. M is direct sum of the component which is inside M. So, this is the stronger property here which is not true in general. So, the idea is uh, I think I might have uh, done. So, let me sketch a proof of this. So, so let lambda is the highest weight, lambda is the highest weight. Of v. Then we know that uh, what do you know? If lambda is highest weight, then dimension of uh, dimension of v lambda is one. Okay. So we fix element here. So fix uh, non-zero element. A non-zero element. Element v zero inside v lambda. And let so, then you know that uh, what you know for any positive root x alpha is going to kill and uh, let m is uh, ul z times v 0 hmm? you take the sub uh, subgroup to general okay ul z subgroup is generated by this element then since this is a maximal uh, this is a maximal vector so all positive root vector will kill it okay and the elements of h will act by a scalar so what do you get this is a precisely ul negative right so so reason is that see x alpha v 0 is 0 for every positive root and h acts by scalar hmm? and h into v is uh, so some, so some is scalar say times v 0 for every h sorry lambda h lambda h v 0. So, what do you get? You will, you will get exactly this. Okay. That is true, but uh, yeah, that is enough to is enough. Okay, what uh, Raghun says the following because see the element or element in uh, this. Uh, uh, constant lattice is of this form. Okay, uh, contribution from H is of the form, say H i some B i, right? Product of H i B i. But when this you apply to V, it will be simply V naught uh, lambda H i B i times the scalar. Hmm? So, this is an integer, so it is enough to just uh, uh, take the element there. This is a so, now the, why this is lattice? So, so, first of all, 
uh, this is going to be a uh, okay so at least uh, this model uh, so we'll show that uh, it has a basis exactly and the number of element basis exactly the number of uh, a, a, the, the dimension of the vector space right so so the what is the question, uh, question? so this is the since uh, if you remember the all x alpha so you consider so let uh, rho be the representation afforded by v so then you know that then uh, rho x alpha this is nil potent right nil potent for every alpha and phi so therefore uh, this kind of vector so therefore hence so this imply that uh, rho uh, x alpha power m which is same as rho x alpha power m this will kill v uh, is 0 for m sufficiently large for m sufficiently large right so for sufficiently large m so this is 0 so this imply that uh, this is at least finitely generated because for finite, uh, so only finitely many element will not kill it. So that means uh, it ha this uh, this is a finitely generated model uh, subgroup. So this implies that M is a finitely generated, finitely generated Z model. Okay. So, and this is span over C is going to give the everything. So, what remains to show that its Z rank cannot be bigger than M. Okay. So, then you are done. So, enough to show that. So, we show that. So, it is Z rank of this. So, exactly the dimension of uh, then you are done. It is a finitely generated model and uh, over principal ideal domain so it is certainly going to be free. So, but if the rank is exactly the dimension then you are done. So, the proof is by the proof is by uh, contradiction suppose it, it is not. See, this is the model over Z, right? And finitely generated model over Z. We have a structure theorem for finitely generated model. It is free model. So, sitting inside the vector space. Torsion free. So, okay. So, it's a free model. And we want to show that its rank is exactly the dimension of this. Uh -huh. That will have that rank too. But R has dimension. R is one. So that you have to show that that kind of thing does not happen. For example, so for example, you could have two two of these sequences going into the same if you apply y one, y two, or y two, y one from that B, they're going into the same base space. One could be one times something, the other could be two two times something, and then you have a problem. It's okay. So that, kind of, that problem is so that probably not there. So that's what we want to make sure. So therefore, this is enough to show that if if I have any linearly independent set, uh, then the number of element in uh, that cannot be okay larger than the dimension. Okay. So we'll show that. So let uh, say say S. V1, V2, Vr, Li. This is a subset in M, which is uh, 
linearly independent over z then you, show, you want to show that it is also linearly independent over over okay so uh, we want to show s is also l i over c okay so any it cannot be so now you take r to be minimal so take r minimal okay so assume so for example i will take the you contradict it so if possible assume that there is a such linearly independent set and uh, so that is not is a c linearly dependent okay so if possible assume that assume that s is uh, linearly dependent where r is minimal r is minimal you are taking the minimal subset uh, which is really independent here but uh, linearly dependent here okay so then there will be scalar complex scalar then there exists some um, ai complex number so not all zero okay says that some ai vi is zero hmm? so now here is the uh, tree so now you our first observation is the following uh, so observation number 1 is there exist v u in inside u z okay such that uh, u times v1 so uh, so this is the lambda component so this is so this is the lambda component so this this element in v lambda so this element uh, let, let me write like this so this element in uh, v lambda is non zero right so what uh, what i want to uh, say that there exists some element in this uh, constant form so that uh, the lambda component of u times v1 is not zero okay why for other ways otherwise what will happen that uh, ul v1 is a sub model of v suppose uh, every uh, they know such u we satisfy this property that means uh, every element here kills v1 there is okay uh, then you will uh, so that that means you will times v1 is a model right some model here but v is irreducible a contradiction v is irreducible it is a contradiction so this is the, this is a contradiction right since v is irreducible so therefore at least uh, there at least there should be at least one element which has this property uh, so now what you do on the other hand uh, so there is another observation that v lambda component of this the second observation say that v lambda component of this is uh, inside there I have written there. So u times uh, u times v i component is uh, m intersection v lambda. This is just proved. Why? Because m is oh m is not there.
right? Yeah. So actually, uh, I require. So I have given two statements, right, in the beginning. So first, I want to prove the first one that any subgroup which is invariant and reduced has uh, decomposed direct some a uh, weight space inside M. Okay, then this one because this this is going to be required now. See what what I am trying to say that suppose you have M is a subgroup of V uh, invariant and there uh, okay. So, invariant under this uh, uz, uh, ulz, then m is direct sum of uh, v mu intersection m. This statement I could have proved first, then because this is going to, uh, I mean this information is required here. So, if, uh, okay, so th uh, th this, this is one. And the second statement is that uh, V has uh, an adversarial lattice. Is it okay? So, I have started the proof of this, but proof of this requires this information, okay? Because at this place I am uh, requiring. So, let, let us assume for the moment and then we will prove it. Eh? Assume for the moment here. So, M is because M is a subgroup here, uh, which, uh, this is going to be invariant under admissible lattice. So, therefore, it is invariant under uh, this. So, therefore, M has decomposition like this. Okay. So, M is direct sum of uh, M intersection of EPU. So, therefore, this, uh, this is going to be exactly z times v 0, this information if you grant 1, this is exactly going to be this because this is going to okay. So, therefore, uh, so lambda component of every element will be inside this. So, therefore, uh, hence, uh, hence there exists some m i. So, u times v i is some m i times v 0. So, m i belong to integers, right. So, now you play the trick that you already have a a i v i 0 and you have already asserted that the lambda component of this element is non-zero. So, that, that is m 1 is not 0, okay. So, m 1 this and m 1 is not 0 by 1 by observation 1. So, m 1 is not 0 and so you play this uh, uh, okay. So, use this in these two informations. So, therefore, you have this equal to 0 in place. So, m 1 multiply by m 1, m 1 times uh, some a i v i. So, this is 0 and okay. So, uh, you first use this one. So, A i uh, some A i V i equal to 0. So, this is uh, this equal to 0 implies uh, the sum A i and u i times v i is also not 0, right. But uh, that is, uh, so m i the sum a, sorry, u. So, this is a, a i m m i v 0, right. This, this equal to 0, but v is a non-zero vector and this is a scalar. So, this has to be 0, right.
So, this implies uh, this scalar is 0, the sum of the scalar ai mi equal to 0, this sum is 0. So, now uh, you consider uh, the sum, so you multiply it and so uh, you have m 1 times sum a i v i right. So, because this sum is 0, so multiply by this, this will be 0 and minus multiply by this minus sum a i m i ok. So, because uh, this sum is also 0, this, uh, this sum is 0, so this is 0, this sum is also 0, you multiply by v 1, uh, v 1. So, then you have a reduced relation. So, this is same as what, what do you have? The sum is start from 2. So, this is uh, i start from 1 to r, right. So, then you have uh, a i m 1, ok. Uh, so, a i m 1 uh, minus a i m i and v i min uh, so a i is common I am sorry what is common here so this is m a 1 a 1 get cancelled and So, this is a i a i m 1 right uh, minus hmm? ok. So, what ok. So, I am sorry. So, a i a i this then m 1 v i minus uh, minus m i right m i v 1 m i v 1 this is a, i start from 2 to r this sum is 0 v 1 is a non 0 vector ok and uh, m 1 is also not 0 m 1 is uh, I arrived it m 1 is not 0 right there the lambda component. So, this is not 0. So, you have a smaller relation and the of course, this state is linearly independent. So, uh, so m i m i v 1. So, I am uh, um, subtracting uh, this element from this v i. So, this these vectors are also linearly independent and you have a smaller relation. So, therefore, uh, this is a contradiction. So, because you have taking the smallest, uh, so this r minimal linearly, uh, so uh, linearly independent set which is really dependent there ok. So, you have got a smaller, so this is a contradiction. So, this uh, contradicts the minimality of r. Is it ok? See, I have produced a smaller linearly independent set which is linearly dependent over C. That is what we have done here, done there. So, therefore, uh, it, uh, so therefore, uh, this means that dimension of this is z rank is exactly, therefore, and the theorem is proved. Hmm? one is there in, in problem. So, ok. I have put all the stuff there. So, now let us prove uh, first which is which has been used in the proof of this. So, for the uh, proof of this we required 
two, two lemma. So, which so lemma is the following suppose you have subset S a finite set in ZL S finite and uh, D is a vector in ZL where D is not there, ZL minus S, which is not in S. Then there is function, then there exists a function F uh, in C, so these are indeterminate TL says that F O uh, Okay, so f of z l is inside z and f of s equal to 0, f of d is 1, s is finite. Okay. So, that uh, trick is the following, uh, you I will just write statement suppose d is or d 1 d, uh, d is d 1 d 2 d l and k is any non negative integers. Suppose k is any non negative integer, then you consider this polynomial consider the polynomial f k uh, which is The product of elements of this form uh, T i minus D i plus k choose k and minus T i minus T i plus D i plus k choose k. Okay. So, i equal to 1 to l. So, then it has property that uh, uh, if you take a box with center d and in each direction uh, you take a lattice point, okay. So, so, so this is this or d. So, in either direction I take d i uh, plus k, d i minus k and each so okay so in each component you take uh, you, uh, so starting from here you consider the all uh, vector uh, le length of uh, so size 2k and take the lattice point corresponding lattice point then are those those points so this f is zero except at this point so for example if i take uh, let, let me just uh, take the l equal to 2 so what i am trying to say if i take suppose l is 2 and our k is uh, okay l is l is 2 then how our, uh, my box is going to look like so this is our d so this is our d okay so uh, which is d1 d2 and then d1 so this point is uh, okay so this is d1 plus k and d2 right and this point is uh, d 1 minus k d 2. Similarly, you have point here and point here. So, you consider all such uh, similarly you have point here and point here. So, you consider all such points. So, uh, this function is going to vanish at every point except at the center. Okay. So, and if s is finite then if you take k to be large enough then s will be contained there. So, therefore, it is going to vanish there also. So, the, uh, th this is the argument. This is Humphrey or in Sternberg notes you can see it. Okay, that is how you get the function f. So, <coughs> now how to prove? <coughs> and uh, the function at, uh, at d is 1. d is? What is its value d at uh, the value at d is 1 at 1 exactly one. 
and you, of course, you have convention that when k is greater than this number, this is zero. Okay. Now let us prove the prove this statement. Uh, proof of the fact that uh, m equal to direction m intersection v mu. This, uh, so, what do you fix? Uh, you take any weight there. Okay. So, you take d. So, let uh, fix say lambda. Uh, lambda this time is not uh, the highest one. So, this is uh, uh, okay, any weight here. And let d is d is or uh, d lambda which is uh, nothing but lambda h 1 lambda h l right and s is our set uh, uh, d mu defined similarly where uh, mu is in p weight weight but uh, mu is different from lambda right so then this is a set uh, of that kind is a finite set because this is finite this is a finite set did then contain d so therefore there is a polynomial with this property okay so you have f so there is f uh, there is f as in lemma above okay so but if there is such a function then it is a combinatorial lemma it it will be a linear combination of the element of okay yeah, the function will be so you can see uh, this is the theorem lemma 26.1 in humphrey or this is a sternberg lecture note if you have that is lemma 4 so if you have a function uh, with this property that if you replace t i by integers is inside there, then the function is uh, a linear, okay. so this is an integral linear combination of the element of the following kind. Okay. So, then f is, okay. so, so hence uh, by lemma in Humphrey or whatever. So, f is the linear combination of elements. of the type what kind of elements of the type product so this is uh, t i n i i equal to 1 to n where n is less than equal to the degree of uh, f in t i. So, this integer, so, so this n i is n i is varying, so n i is varying, but it does not exceed the degree of f inside t, uh, in t i in the variable t i. Okay? So, you consider all such kind of thing, uh, uh, then it is going to be a, a linear combination of such kind of element. So, if I replace t i by h i, then you are done. Sure. So, it's a lemma, a commentary lemma, I do not know. Uh, Commentary lemma, I think uh, 26.1. Nice fact, but uh, important. Yeah, important. Important. So, so therefore, uh, okay. So, what do it mean that? 
you have this. Now you take uh, f to be uh, u to be take u to be f of uh, u 1, u 2, uh, not u 1, h 1, h 2, h 1, h 2, h n, right. So, then uh, the ends belongs there because uh, this means uh, u is a linear combination of element of the type h i n i where n i satisfy this. So, then this implies that then so u belongs to u l z in fact u l 0 u 0 0 that of course here. So, further what is the property of this? So, this u acts as a projection of v onto v lambda. So, further uh, u acts as a projection of v okay, into. So, okay, so because the integral thing only you get uh, into v lambda. Why? Yeah, that is true. So, the m okay, of m to v intersection m lambda. Okay, on to. So, this is now. Okay. Why? Because uh, this has a property that it scales every weight. So, only weight remains will is just mu uh, lambda. Okay, all other weights disappear. So, therefore, you are done. Okay. So, uh, you have uh, got a polynomial, so that this property, this property will. So, you are done. So, now I still have uh, some time. So, let us at least uh, define our Chevalier group and then. So, there are uh, several uh, small things, but uh, very important. Uh, you should go to some uh, lemma this the lemma which proves this in Humphrey or Sternberg. So, now what is Shivale groups? The bracket checks us. So, what are this? So, you start with a faithful module. Okay. So, V is a, this is a faithful L model and M an admissible that is now you know that it exists. So, we will discuss the uh, see because uh, this is a uh, this lattice which I have constructed uh, minimal in certain sense minimal lattice because the minimal thing we have done you start with the highest weight vector and you have obtained it okay so okay but we will not discuss this point here right now so let's define the Chevalier group today so m is admissible lattice in v and fix a field k so k is arbitrary field this is the k is uh, an arbitrary field. In fact, uh, you take any commutative ring with one surely, okay. So, but anyway, let us arbitrary field. So, now I know that M has decomposition like this uh, V uh, mu intersection M mu belongs to P V. Okay. So, now we set uh, some other name. So, V k is k tensor m over z and V k mu is k tensor. So, okay. So, let us call it. Uh, so, uh, m mu 
So notation is m mu is uh, v a mu uh, intersection m. So v k uh, v okay. V k is k tensor uh, m mu. The portion inside here of the mu uh, bit space. So then you have decomposition because you have decomposition of m like this. So you have a decomposition of V k. as v k mu k in p v is a direct sum ah mu k is ok. So, now uh, you consider the representation which I have heard. So, this is a, a representation of L afforded by P. So, you also fix a basis uh, of the vector space so let uh, say S be a basis of m1, m2, md be a z basis of ok. So, this is z basis of this. So, then we have uh, and t is indeterminate, t is uh, indeterminate. And consider this kind of element. Uh, see, the, we have used the notation T n and rho x, uh, say power x alpha, power n divided by factorial n. So this will be used for uh, this uh, this thing T n tensor rho x alpha n by factorial n ok. So, I will use uh, this notation for for this one. Then, <coughs> so now you note that uh, since uh, this uh, endomorphism is uh, nil potent rho x l phi is nil potent. So, this is a nil potent element uh, you consider the matrix of this uh, exponential of this. So, it is uh, exponential of uh, T rho x alpha, which usually you define like uh, what, what the way you define. So, this is a T rho x x alpha and so on T square rho x alpha square by factorial 2 and so on. Okay. So, this is the endomorphism and you can write down its matrix. Uh, now, field has not been appeared right here. So, I have replaced uh, I have taken indeterminate Rho x alpha, this okay, okay. So, this this is a tensor, yes. No, uh, GL of z p. Okay, yeah, that is true. So, this is a so this is a GL of uh, so z t tensor, this is m. Right? Is it okay? This is a polynomial. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a polynomial. Okay. So now, if we specialize uh, a T by elements of the field, we'll get uh, 
the element here. So, if I replace T by suppose uh, okay, so specialize T by elements of this, so replace T by some elements say uh, uh, U inside K, then you will get uh, this element what it is called uh, element exponential U rho x alpha. So, replace this T by this. So, this is going to be member of uh, G L V K. Hmm? Uh, is it okay? See, uh, the, this is a nilpotent endomorphism. So, therefore, this is a nilpotent uh, uh, thing. So, uh, an exponential of uh, nilpotent endomorphism is invertible endomorphism. So, you get an invertible in, uh, in, uh, endomorphism of this subgroup. Now, replace this variable uh, uh, T by element of the field, then you get a okay. So, element in this this group, right? And the Shivali group over G is what you call G V K. They are actually built in, they are operating. Yeah, 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 that, that is already <laughs> there, that is already there. Maybe we will uh, discuss some point uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, because, see, this uh, admissible means what? So, the lattice is invariant under all such endomorphism, right? So, this will not uh, I mean, create any problem at all, even the characteristic of uh, the field is finite. So, this, this will already take care of, suppose the characteristic is even 2. So, before going to 2, this will vanish. Okay. So, so here is a, maybe a, tomorrow also I will uh, emphasize this. Suppose the characteristic of field is, what I am saying the characteristic of field is uh, 2. Okay. So, this endomorphism, when before just reaching here, this will uh, action of this on this uh, space will be a multiple of two, it will give the two times some something something and which will be just get killed. So, okay, so so do not have, to, so this factorial 2 in the denominator will not going to occur there. So, similarly the characteristic is P before just reach, reaching P everything will be finished, everything will be finished. No, that's not done. Eh? No, what, what I am saying that? See, if you take in such endomorphism, if, if you take such kind of, uh, in, uh, this kind of endomorphism, if the characteristic is uh, prime characteristic, so if you and take this action on this M, uh, then certain multiple of P will come. Okay, if it is, if factorial N is greater than uh, P, then certain multiple of this will come. So, this will be 0 there. In the vector space, this will be 0, 0 endomorphism there. So, that is not going to give a problem. First, you first you apply at the lattice there and you get the integral thing and then, okay. so whatever the characteristic is going to get the problem that is already taken care of by those things and then uh, this denominator is not. Maybe I will uh, give some examples tomorrow of certain characteristic and it will be okay. So, what is the Shivali group? This is uh, V k is the group generated by all such uh, exponential uh, u uh, rho uh, x alpha where alpha belongs to your phi and u belongs to field k. This is the Shivali group. Okay, uh, this is our Shivali group, and if uh, suppose if the representation is v is, ad, uh, v is adjoint representation, adjoint, then this is called adjoint type of Shivali group, and if v the standard representation, uh, standard uh, or real, uh, okay. So let me not say like this. So if the lattice is root lattice then the group is called a joint type and with the lattice is the universal lattice, everything all weights occurring, then it is called universal Shivali group. So, I will start uh, from uh, this uh, tomorrow and give some examples there 
and we will also discuss the what are the characteristics which are going to give some problem there. Yeah, the point that Kamlaksha was saying is that those operators, that, that whole thing that rho x square 2 by x factorial lives as an operator on n. So it, so it has meaning in any 